Okay, to evaluate piecewise functions, we are going to look and see this top equation is on the left of negative 1. The middle equation is in between negative 1 and 3. And the last equation is to the right of 3. So when we want to find negative 1 from the right. We're from the right. We're going to be in the blue piece. So we're going to do negative 1 squared plus 3, and we get 4. We do negative 1 from the left. We're on the red piece. So we do 2 times negative 1 plus 6. So we also get 4. Because these are equal, we know the limit exists, and it is 4. 3 from the right will be the black piece. So if we do 4 times 3 minus 1, we have 12 minus 1, which is 11. If we're on the left, we're on the blue. So we have 3 squared plus 3. 9 plus 3 gives us 12. Since these do not equal, we have D and E, because the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right. Negative infinity, okay, negative infinity, you're looking at this piece here, 2x plus 6. If you think about the line, 2x plus 6, it looks something like this. As I go toward negative infinity, my y values are going to negative infinity. You could write does not exist as well. As I go to 5, that's going to be on the black piece, so 4 times 5 is 20, minus 1 is 19. 2 from the left, 2 is in between 1 and negative 1 and 3, so we're blue. So 2 squared plus 3 gives us 7. Okay, continuity. This is where a lot of people have trouble. This has three pieces. So it has two breakpoints. So if we look here, negative 4, it's a breakpoint. And then 1 is another breakpoint. So, we want to make sure that our second condition is met, that the limit as x goes to negative 4 of f of x exists, and that the limit as x goes to 1 of f of x exists. We need to check the limit from the left here, and the limit from the right, and we need to check the limit from the right, and the limit from the left as well. So the limit as x goes to negative 4 from the left of f of x needs to equal the limit as x goes to negative 4 from the right of f of x. So if we're on the left of negative 4, we want the limit as x goes to 4 of this top function, because that's the function on the left of negative 4, to be equal to this second piece at x squared minus 7. We are approaching 4, so we plug in the 4 for x and negative 4 for x in both places. Negative 2 times negative 4 plus a needs to be equal to negative 4 squared minus 7. So we have 8 plus a equals 16 minus 7. So 8 plus a equals 9. So a equals 1. For over here, we want the limit from the left one from the left of the function to equal the limit as x approaches one from the right of the function. So we have x squared minus seven needs to equal bx squared minus two. So we plug in one into both of these places. So we're gonna get one squared minus seven needs to equal b times 1 squared minus 2. So we have 1 minus 7 gives us negative 6 needs to be b minus 2. We are 2. So you get b equals negative 4. All right, intermediate value theorem. In order to use the intermediate value theorem, first you need to say that f of x is continuous on the closed interval. Then you need to show that you have a value that is lower and a value that is higher. And we do that by plugging in both endpoints. So f of 0, if we plug in 0, we get negative 5. f of 4, if I do 4 squared plus 2 times 4 minus 5, I get 16. Plus 8 minus 5 gives us 19. We're trying to prove that we have a 3. 3 is in between. negative 5 and 19. 
Therefore, by the intermediate value theorem, there is a C on this interval we're talking about in between 0 and 4 such that f of c equals 3. So we're saying the picture for y'all to see at 0 we're down at negative 5 and at 4 we are at 19 somewhere up here. So there has to be some t time in between where I pass through the line y equals 3. There has to be some c in here. Well if I plug in the c I get 3. Same idea, f of x is continuous on to 7, you plug in your 2, you plug in your 7, we get negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, plus 11 is 5, negative 3 times 7, negative 21, plus 11 is negative 10, so by the intermediate value theorem, there is a c on to 7, such that f of c equals 0. Okay, complete the table to find the limit. So if I pull up my calculator, sorry for not having it up already, we just need to put this function in our calculator. So go to y equals and type in your function. So it's going to be x squared plus 2x divided by, in parentheses, 4x plus 8. And then if you go second window and highlight ask second table, type in your values, negative 2.1. We get negative 0.525. Negative 2.05 we get negative 0.512 or you can round to 3 negative 2.01 negative 0.5025 negative 2.001 so we're getting closer and closer and closer to negative 2 negative 0.500 we do the other side negative 1.999 negative if we round it's point five zero zero. Negative one point nine nine. Negative point four nine eight. Negative one point nine five. Negative point four eight eight. Negative one point nine. Negative point four seven five. Therefore from the left and from the right. We're squeezing in on negative one half, or negative point five. Okay, looking at the graph, negative four from the right. So here's my negative four. From the right, you're on this piece. We're approaching the y value of three. Negative four from the left. On this piece, I'm approaching one. These do not match, so this is D and E. Two from the right. I'm going towards this open circle, which is at three. So that was from the right, left and from the right. You're also going to 3, so the whole limit is 3. Negative infinity is on this far piece over here, and you're going up to positive infinity. So I go to infinity, I'm staying at this, and my y value is negative 5. You're always looking for the y value. 5 from the left, 5 from the left, and 5 from the right. You're closing on this y value, which is 0. This is really easy. Just plug in 7 for f of x and negative 3 for g of x using your limited property. So this is 7 over negative 3. This is 3 times your negative 3, your g of x, plus 2 times your 7. So we get negative 9 plus 14. So we get 5. Okay, first up, plug in your 4. You see you get 0 over 0, which means you have to factor. So when you're factoring, this gives you a clue. x minus 4 is your factor. So if I say x minus 4, x minus 4, x times 2x gives me that 2x squared. 
negative 4 times the positive 3 x plus 2 and taking the limit as x goes to 4 now we're able to remove our problem your last step is to plug in your 4 here and here so we have 2 times 4 plus 3 over 4 plus 2 so we get 8 times 11 over 6 first step plug in your negative 1 you're going to get 0 on top I'm going to plug in negative 1 on the bottom however I get 0 over 2 0 over a number is okay you're 0 this is just the horizontal line y equals 1 so no matter where I am what's my y value always equal to 1 this is your trig rules. So it would be 5 halves times your sine of 3x over x. Well, if you have a 3 down up here, you want to put a 3 here, but you have to balance it. This goes to 1, so you end up multiplying 5 times 3 divided by 2, so it's 15 halves. It's really just a fraction that you've seen, and this one we just have to multiply the tops together. 5 times 3 is your 15, and then we have our 2 on the bottom. Alright, infinity. I have small over big, so my answer is zero. This you're going to multiply by the conjugate. So it's the square root of x plus 2 plus 3. You multiply straight across, so you're going to get this thing squared, which is x plus 2 minus the 9. So it's this thing squared. Over at the bottom, you just write side by side. Oops. Plus three. You don't change the bottom. Don't change. You just write the bottom side by side. Now you're trying to get rid of x minus seven. The top simplifies. Two minus nine gives you this minus seven. So now you can cross off. Don't forget. What do you have on top? A one. You're taking the limit as x goes to seven. So you plug in your seven. 1 over the square root of 9 plus 3 gives you 1 over 6. Okay, we're going to break for here.